Beverly Hills Royal. I am Dr. Stella Snyder. And Prince Mario Max Schaumburg Lippe. This is Prince Mario Max Schaumburg Lippe. I'm here in New York City to present you Shani, a Maasai leader who is going to take us into his world of fascinating African Kenyan culture. My name is Ole Petanya Yusuf Shani, a director of Shampole Lodge, a member of Shampole Group Ranch, and a trustee of Shampole Community Trust. What all can I see? It must be the landscape, the animals. Give me a short description. Many people love the culture of the Maasai. When you arrive in Shampole, you get a warm welcome. But the Maasai is still living like the traditional normal life. Do you have any cows? Because for the, the cows are important for the Maasai. They depend on the cow for survival, to have food on the table, to take their children to school, to pay the medical bills, literally everything. But how come the idea of building a lodge in this wonderful landscape? The, the, the world is changing. We are not going to pretend that the world is not changing. It is changing. The Maasai have lived for ages with wildlife. The most dangerous ones being lions, elephants, rhino, cheetah. So how can we bring tourists to Shompole without destroying the land? How does all this melt together? We can use the culture of the Maasai, package with the wildlife, with the pristine landscapes, build a nice lodge like Top Notch, one of the best tree in Africa. How would you describe it? This lodge is located on a steep slope that overlooks the Shompole conservation area and overlooks the Shompole mountain. Each unit is number one unique on its own. And the concept is around the Maasai house. When a, a wall is made or constructed, if they find a big tree, the tree is part of the house. It goes out of the roof, so the, the house, the tree is built into the house design. But the room is very open, because the Maasai house does not have a door. So we normally put a spear in the middle of the door to indicate that you are in. So the spear is a kind of the door. <laughs> do not disturb sign, <laughs> <laughs> the Maasai language. Awesome. One of the things that is unique in the units is what we call wallows. Wallows are like private swimming pools. You know, rhinos in the savannah, when they feel hot, they run into a wallow. Like, they dip themselves inside the water. Yes. So that's the concept we are using at the lodge, to provide the clans with an opportunity to have a plunge swimming pool in their own room. And then you have a nine by nine bed. So there's water running around your bed. Oh, it uh, cools it again and it's good it's for the Very nice. Then it's cool, yeah. nice rooms that blend with the environment. I think the impact must be amazing. In the conventional tourism or mass tourism, you find people going to a hundred bed lodge. Yeah. Let's say hundred clients. Two guests per car, fifty cars. That's a lot of cars. Yeah. And the ecosystem is very fragile. The soil is very loose. You're destroying the, the, the savanna grassland. You disturb the animals. And it's not good. Like in the Masai Mara, you find a hundred hundred vans surrounding one cheetah. Yeah. That's not a good thing. In Shambhali, can only find one van with, with, with a pride of lions. Maybe five lions, one car. People can come, enjoy the exclusivity of the lodge. Really happy to spend the money there. So the whole lodge is more or less run as a non-profit, supporting the whole tribe. That money is plowed back to help the community. So the living standards of the community is improved in many ways in health, education, water provisions, and many other things. So next to this amazing quality of the lodge, it's also a kind of payback from the nations that really cause the climate trouble, isn't it? Climate change is an issue. Droughts are becoming more frequent, more persistent. So last year, 2009, we lost 90% of our livestock. The few gains we got when we built the lodge is just plummeted. So we're trying to raise that up because if people have jobs, uh, people can live in peace, we have uh, family cohesion, and we must provide a way to give them a job in the lodge so that they can also feed their children. Yeah. And what about this great jewelry you're wearing, uh, the Maasai tradition behind it? Can you explain a little bit about that? The symbol for heroes is this ornament here. And this is for the Morans, military arm of the Maasai. Like this design is unique to where I come from. This is our tradition, this is our heritage. This is what defines who the Maasai are. People without tradition or without a culture, it's really difficult to keep them together. And the Maasai, because we still live in these remote areas, of the countryside, we need to live a communal life. So this information is passed over every generation so that then the, the, the cycle of the Maasai culture and traditions move on forever. And even Kenya as a country, 
is using the Maasai culture to market or promote tourism outside the country. We need yes. to spread the word. It sounds so exciting. So just by listening to you, I'm already in Shambhala, Africa. <laughs> I want to discover soon. <laughs> Good man. Thank you. Good man. Next on Beverly Hills Royal, Katya Reikerman, the Hollywood-based world-class musician and top-notch performer who produced her new album Never Stand Still together with Grammy Award nominee Chef Caruters. <laughs> Steffi's house. Oh, it was bought for me. Yes. What's the occasion? By the way, who's this? Uh, we have a video <laughs> and song from an unknown city that the size never stands still. Killer song. Never stands still. Never stands still. <laughs>
Next on Beverly Hills Royal, the uber talented singer, songwriter, composer, actor, voice actor and producer, Billy Kaman. Okay, hi, I'm Billy Kaman. I'm here in North Hollywood. I'm originally from Germany. I'm here for the past 18 years already and I initially came over to the States uh, because I was a recording artist in Germany and I worked um, for different radio stations in Germany and we produced the, the songs here and I ended up finding a producer for my own records and that's how I apparently ended up here in the States. And I'm, uh, I had a couple kids to raise so I had a little bit of a break from the, um, the real creative world here in the entertainment business but I always kept writing and um, I just uh, recently uh, kind of get into the door again of, of, of composing songwriting, particularly for movies and commercials. My recent uh, project was a beautiful project. I was able to co-write a song for the newest Anthony Hopkins feature film called Kidnapping Mr. Heineken, which I was quite surprised it was a little bit of a challenge because it was set in the 19, well the song was supposed to be written in the 1940s Malini Dietrich kind of style which we achieved and actually got into the movie so um, and it just got released like a half year ago and last week actually got added to the Netflix network and it's going to be released all over the world really and that project led me to a couple other writing projects as well. Right now we in discussion, hopefully that works out for the new movie of uh, Ryan Gosling, which apparently is a five, Indie 500 um, movie, which I would be very excited about if that's working. Because that, that's the kind of music style I really love. So yeah, um, God, you know, I do a lot of things. <laughs> I should be actually way older than I already am. <laughs> um, I'm not only composing and writing, I also, uh, involved in a couple of TV film productions myself, either as a writer or a creator of it. Uh, very excited about a documentary we're doing right now, which is a big topic uh, in all over the world, not only in America, but it is about race relations in America. Uh, it calls um, hashtag 314, which is the area code of Ferguson. And if people remember the Michael Brown shooting with the police involved uh, shooting, um, uh, so where everybody stops reporting, we actually starting. The Ferguson incidents is literally only the incubator of the problem. So we um, really going behind, you know, the, the police brutality, um, you know, poverty versus privilege, policy versus procedure. That's really the topic of it. And I'm very excited about that because I think that message needs to get out. Yes, I'm a singer uh, and a voiceover talent. Um, I mean, I was a recording artist for the longest time. Uh, people probably knew me uh, in my girls' pop duo I was in called Sweet Connection. That was in the beginning of the 90s. And um, I also released a couple of single uh, solo albums myself. And I'm writing for other artists. I did commercial work. Uh, uh, and voiceover, as a voiceover artist, actually I do a lot of synchronization, as we would say in Germany, like synchronizing the voice of an American actor and giving him a German voice, the alter ego. And I just recently did the Golden Globe winning new series. It's actually an Amazon original called Transparent. And I was, <laughs> I was speaking one of the um, transgender characters in there, which was really funny. I, I don't know if I told you that, but uh, you know, um, uh, I, was, I went to the casting, I had no idea what it was about and the director says, Billy, you have this kind of lower quality in your voice, can you go a little lower? And I said, do you mean like that? And he's like, oh my God, exactly like that. And so later on, they, said, they called me two days later and said, hey, you got the job actually for a co-star role in that whole thing, giving the German voice to this uh, actress, you know, playing Davina in Transparent. And it's just got released in Germany as well. So that's some other work I really enjoy to do. It's fun, you know, slipping in all those different characters. I also worked as an actress, not as active anymore. I was in a couple of feature films, um, a couple of commercial, a couple of TV shows, uh, like, I don't know if people remember, uh, Bill and Grace, um, 
as an extra supported um, little role I had in there. And, uh, but I didn't pursue that as much because to be honest, I'd rather be the creative than being in front of the camera so much. I really am. I mean, you know, I had my time. <laughs> so I really enjoy working also with other actors and um, helping them to establish their brand, you know, if you want to put it that way. Believe it or not, I even have a little bit of a role in the management team right now for an amazing group from Spain. They like uh, this very professional dance company, uh, Seven Brothers from Barcelona. Super hot, um, super great show and we're trying to solidify a, a residency in Las Vegas for them right now. All right. Um, okay, this is like a commercial I wrote uh, where they're from in Germany. Uh, for Apollinaria's Mineral Water. It's quite a while ago, but um, we created a single out of it. And actually, by the way, I just um, submitted that to um, Megan Trainer, who uh, they're looking for songs, and they asked me if I you know, have some stuff for her. See, can you hear it? <laughs> Next. Uh, uh, this one here was the last one. Actually, with the original Temptations in the background. That was my last release in, uh, uh, in Germany when I was with Sony Columbia. I don't know if I should forward that a little bit or... What do you think? Next? Uh, um, what else do we have? You know what? I actually really came up with the Spice Girl people, okay? <laughs> so, not a lot of people know that. That was the band I created and it called Hot and Spice at that time and um, apparently the English production team uh, got an idea of that and they used the concept literally and called it instead of Hot and Spice in my band, they called it Spice Girls and everybody knows that was the song. People. It could have been nice. What's the name of that song? And you wrote it? Yes. I did write this song and then I got together with a production team uh, at that time, with uh, Tony Couture and, and, and uh, Bülow Aris and a couple of other friends I had and we, we kept on writing a whole album actually for the Hot and Spice Girls. So, um, what was the question again? <laughs> I'm like distracted by this because you know what? It's kind of sad. But we learn out of our mistakes, right? That's it. What's your favorite song you ever did? What I wrote? Hmm, that's hard. I mean, I have I have tons of stuff um, I wrote. Honestly, it calls "It's Not Pretty Being Pretty." My one of my favorite songs never got released. It still is something I would love to do. This is it. Hold on. Can I just? Why can't I hold this a little bit? I had actually incredible musicians on this on this um, record I did. Not only um, I worked with Mr. Mr.'s guitar player, which you hear on here. Yeah, uh, I had Abel Abel Jr. Um, I had uh, two of them original Temptations on one of my singles I, I released. And uh, that was one of my favorite ones because of all we women have to go through, we keep waiting, right? So, that's one of my favorite. And Be a good Megan Trainor song too. I just thought of this one here. I did in, in England, which was very experimental to that time. Um, that was I wanted to mix kind of techno with rock and pop and kind of very use organic instruments plus electro instruments. I did that at the time. Dedicated to my son Marlon, called Future Child. He's now 22 years old. That one. <laughs> and you know what? I have many more, but that would be your tape later. This is Billy Kamei, and I'm watching Beverly Hills Royal, the TV show. <laughs>
have yourself to blame But I'm afraid that you're all out of chances Sorry is something you said to wear And it's not gonna work, can't you tell Not this time Cause I won't let it go to my heart So take your best shot I won't be anything I'll finish whatever you start You won't get that far Cause I won't let it go to my heart I won't let it go oh. I've seen a bad moon rising I never knew it shine so bright So put your glasses on I'm glad I'm gone I'm out of your justice I'm out of your games Out of your sickness Your deals and your range I wanted to fly And you never got it But it's For you, but your camera shot me wrong. Not the front page girl you counted on. I'm out of my skin and out of your jail. I'm out of your business. You torture, I failed. I wanted to fly. Next on Beverly Hills Royal, Robert W. Cabell, Broadway hit producer and author, and together we fight bullying. This is Prince Mario Max Schomburg Lippe. Bullies are the cowards of the world. Stones can break your bones, but words can tear your heart apart. Twisted words and taunting tones is how a bully likes to start. Cause bullies are the cowards of the world. Yes, bullies are the cowards of the world. Say bullies are the cowards of the world. 
Believe lies can cut so deep that they would make an angel weep. Why do they laugh the more you cry? Why do they shove and push and lie? What pain so deep inside the soul makes hurting others their only goal? Say bully the other cowards of the world. Bully. Sticks and stones. Bully. Can break your bones. Bully. Let's tear it apart. Push and shove, or people who withhold their love. We all need to be who we are and wish upon our own bright star. Believe in that, and you'll get through. Your whole life is ahead of you. Cause bullies are the cowards of the world. Yes, bullies are the cowards of the world. Say, bullies are the cowards of the world. You don't have to follow and you don't have to lead. Live the life you want at your own damn speed. Today you may be skinny or a funny little geek. Just because you're different doesn't mean you're weak. your heart apart That's how they start You don't have to follow and you don't have to lead Or people who withhold their love Live the life you want at your own damn speed We all need Today you may be skinny To be who we are Or a funny little geek And wish upon Just because you're different Our own bright star Doesn't mean you're weak Believe in that Don't listen to the people And you'll get through Who tell you you are wrong Your whole life Whatever makes you different Is ahead of you Can be what makes you strong Cause bullies are the cowards of the world Yes, bullies are the cowards of the world. Let's tear your heart out. Say, bullies are the cowards of the world. That's how a bully Believe in yourself, and the world will believe in you. Sticks and stones. Back off, bullies. We all got your number now. Yeah, your games are over. Cowards are not cool. Bully likes to stop. Different is cool. You better learn a little tolerance. Because we are all over tolerating you. Cause bullies are the cowards of the world. Yes, bullies are the cowards of the world. Say bullies are the cowards of the world. Say 